Now let's talk with Julie Pennington Russell. Julie, thanks so much for joining us today and sharing your message. One of the phrases that uh, jumped out at me that I really like is uh, when you talked about leaning into life or leaning into a faith life. Can you expand on that a little bit for us? Because I, I noticed in your biographical information you like to talk about your own faith journey in that way. But what does that mean to you, leaning into your faith? Well, if, for me, it, it means that whenever things happen to us that we really would rather not face, we, you know, we have a choice, and, and uh, you, know, you can sit where you are, become scared and bitter and, and angry, maybe, or you can actually pitch yourself into, into God's arms, which for me, that image of leaning your life you mm -hmm. know, into your faith, into God, really, is, is what it's about. I love your, um, how you characterize Alice, and she must have been mm -hmm. such a beautiful young woman inside and out. Um, and leaning in to her um, <laughs> fate yeah. reminded me so much of my own niece, Kelsey, who died in a very similar way at, at age 22. And uh, when her mother asked her the purpose of her life, she said, I think it's been all about love. Uh, um, it sounds like you're Allison. You can't say it better than that. But, but you talk about these hair on fire moments <laughs> As a mom, I can identify with the, the story you told uh, about your daughter, Lucy. Um, but I guess I want to know, what do you say to people whose dialogue with God is ragingly angry, people who tend to blame God? You know, what I, what I usually say to people is that I, I think God would much rather have us direct our rage, our anger, toward God, because God can take it, rather than have us turn our back and just sort of, you know, freeze into this stony silence with God. So I, I invite people to turn their anger into prayer. You know, if it's not as though God doesn't know how you feel anyway, so why not verbalize it to God? Does that speak to how we all can be ministers when we talked about that at the top of the program? Your feeling about how we're all called to a certain way, um, wherever we're at in our faith journey? Absolutely. And I think sometimes the way we can be ministers with one another is that when someone is going through the kind of hair on fire moment or maybe a particularly angry moment with God, sometimes what it means to be a minister to that person is to encourage them to remember that with God, hopelessness is always premature, you know, and to just encourage them to hang in there. And, you know, that's sometimes the way we come alongside people. Mm -hmm. The flock at your church, your Baptist church mm -hmm. in Decatur, Georgia, must just love you. Aww. You've been there just a year, haven't you? A little over Talk a year. Talk to us about your church and the parishioners and what your mission is all about. Well, it's funny. You know, if someone had asked me, uh, you know, where do you see yourself ending up? I, I, I'm not sure that being the pastor of a first Baptist church anywhere or, you know, is something that I envision for myself, you know, because when you are a first, any kind of church, first Presbyterian, first Methodist, you know, usually what that means is that you've got years and years of we've always done it that way before and history and sacred cows and, you know, and, the, and, and so I really, you know, never envisioned that I'd be part of that kind of church, but these folks have a gleam in their eye, you know, they're, they're pretty light on their feet and, and out on a limb and I love that about them. I was going to say, is there a denominational difference in the Anabaptist tradition for the First Baptist Church that you're at versus a Southern Baptist Church or something of that nature? Is there, well, is there a distinction you, you there? The, the, of course, the Anabaptists, right. you know, are now in the Mennonite stream. Right. The uh, but but and and in the Baptist family, there are many many little you know right. little fingers on sure. the little branches on that family right. tree. And so uh, you know, Southern Baptist is one cooperative Baptist American. I mean, there are, I think okay. 144. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the reason I ask because yeah. we talk about you being unique as a woman in, in Baptist ministry and I wonder if you could share with us a little bit about why that is or how you found that experience to be um, thus far right. in your ministry. Well traditionally for Baptist in general women uh, pastors is, is a relatively new thing although there have been you know there were women pastors as long ago as you know a hundred or so years. Um, within the within the branches of the Baptist family tree some some of those branches are a little more open to mm -hmm. women some not so much American Baptists pretty open mm -hmm. uh, cooperative Baptists open uh, you know Southern Baptists not so much and then you know it's just um, you know, sort of all over the map. It is a little rare. Okay, now, wonderful. Take us back to your out on the limb congregation. I want to know what you mean by that. In what terms I, of what? In uh, outreach, uh, mission, right. priorities. Uh, what What is that about? 
The way I characterize an out on a limb congregation is a congregation that, that cares what God wants for them more than anything else. Cares more about that than their reputation, cares more about it than their tradition or their history. It's a congregation that in every generation is willing to look and say, in this time, in this place, who is God calling us to be and how can we get there double quick? Okay, so, so how, keep going. How, how, does, how does the church respond to that kind of right. challenge? What are you doing? Right, well, Decatur is, is really a very interesting little town. I mean, it's, it's a city within the city of Atlanta and, uh, and lots of young families with, with children, many of whom are kind of off the page with God. And so, so First Decatur is really responding to that and saying we really care about reaching these people and, you know, and communicating God's love to them. And so we do a lot of things that are more externally focused than, than internally focused. That's very important to us. How about justice and race? Issues. Yeah, very important also to us, and uh, you know we're we're taking steps in that direction. You know this is a this is a church that was begun in in Atlanta just shortly after the Civil War. You okay. know, and so um, so we we've, we've got some steps to take. But again, you know the folks in this congregation, you know, are they're saying this is something God really means for us to do and to be, well, and that's. It, I was going to yeah. say it speaks to what you talked about in your message about being in a storm or finding. God in the storm. Right. Doesn't that require us to be open and ask for God to, to be able to come to us, to show us the, the struggle that we have in that process? Uh, not only by ourselves, but within a faith community as well? Absolutely. And see, it always begins with God. Right. You know, the, 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 the good stuff we do never you know, originates with us. It always is, is initiated by God, and then we come and respond to what God is already doing in the world. Mm -hmm. So. I, I just uh, have to ask you, Julie, on a personal level, what are those hair on fire moments that you have faced yourself personally? Uh, not your children, not your husband, but you, Julie, in your journey in ministry. Well, you know, I, I could tell you know, some funny stories related to sort of the gender thing and people not really understanding what a woman pastor is about. But you know, I mean, if I'm going to be honest, the truth is some of the, some of the scariest, most, um, most anxiety-producing moments for me just come from walking alongside people every day who are in real pain. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of pain in this world. And, you know, letting some of that get on you and in you, you know, it, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's probably the, the hardest thing that I do, and the most joyful in the deepest places. Poetry mm. is one of your companions in that yeah. kind of ministry, isn't it? Yeah, I love poetry. I do. Billy Collins? Oh, tell love tell Billy about Collins. the poetry of Billy Collins. Well, he's just so, you know, he's so real. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a connoisseur of, of, you know, many kinds of poetry, and, and frankly, some of the, you know, some poetry, you know, kind of leaves me puzzled a little bit, but Billy Collins is so immediate, and, you know, of course, the humor for him just opens people up, and, you know, I, I read his poetry and think, oh, my goodness, he's, you know, he's hanging out at my house. He knows me, and I love that. And you you're, love, yeah. I was going to say, you love what you do in, in, in the work that you're doing now, I know, in your, your biography. It's just enjoying spending time with the, your family and with your congregation and Very integrating much. all those things and having traveled from Waco in a whole different part of the country now. Yeah. Uh, you said you're enjoying that a great deal as Very well. Very right? Ten seconds to your future book. What is it? Oh, golly. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, see, that's the thing. I've been working on it for 20 years. I don't even have a title yet. So, you know, pray well, what's for the me. Theme? Just, what's the theme? Well, I, I think probably by now I've got enough vignettes, you know, about, about ministry and life, some hair on fire moments, some, you know, some meaningful moments. I think, I think painting pictures of... of the, uh, the road I've walked could be a lot of fun. Great. Thanks so much for joining us today, Julie. We appreciate it. My pleasure. It.